Christian. Amen. Good to be in the presence of the Lord one more time. Amen. Uh, we want to welcome you to uh, worship. Amen. To the family of faith. Amen. We are glad to be here. Amen. We want to welcome those who will watch uh, by television and internet. Amen. Uh, welcome to worship. We want to thank uh, you for tuning in. Amen. Amen. We're blessed, those of us who are here live and in person. Amen. To worship and to fellowship with one another. Amen. Each Sunday morning. Amen. And we give God glory that he has put, amen, health and strength in our bodies and allowed us to get up out of our beds with uh, our right mind, amen. And so we praise God for uh, being here today in this place. One church, come to you scripture from the book of James. Uh, chapter 2, verses 13, 13 through 18. It's titled, Two Kinds of Wisdom. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show it by his good life, by deeds done in humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, and of the devil. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you will find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy, and good fruit, impartial and sincere. Peacemakers who sow in peace raise a harvest of righteousness. I read to you James chapter 2, verses 13 through 18. May the Lord add a blessing to the read and the hear I was holy and divine word. Amen. I hate you. I hate you. Be Bless the 
When they had heard these words, they marveled and left him and went their way. May the Lord bless the hearing and reading of his word. Amen. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. now as we prepare to go into the presence of the Lord and share with him what's on our hearts. Uh, share with him those things that we wrestle with, decisions we are facing in life. We share with him the burdens that we bear. Uh, we want to come now into his presence. He tells us that we can cast our cares on him. And he even gives us the reason and explanation why it is that we can do that. He says he careth for us. God gives us that blessed hope and assurance that whatever it is that we're going through life, that God is certainly concerned about it and us. And so I invite you into his presence right now. Just bring to him whatever you are your burdens, just bring them to the Lord and leave them there. God will hear you right where you are. God will make the difference in your life. So Lord, we pray. We come to you now, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, who died in our place and shed his blood, that we would even be in such a position that we can come into your presence and to the most holy of holies. Lord, we just want to say thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, that you embraced us and called us your children. You adopted us into the family of faith. All we have to do is simply believe in the finished work of Christ on Calvary's cross and you'll receive us unto yourself. And we just come to you, Lord, with gratitude in our hearts and on our minds, Lord. Before we began to ask you for anything, Lord, we just want to say thank you for everything. You've done so much in our lives, Lord, from one day to the next, Lord. And certainly we're truly grateful for that and we want to say thank you. Lord, there's so much that escaped our mind and memory when we try to thank you for everything, Lord. But we just want to just... Remember, Lord, not just the small things, not just the big things, Lord, but everything that you're doing in our life. Uh, from, from the air that is invisible that we take in and breathe into our lungs, Lord, to the complex functioning of our bodies, Lord. Lord, we say thank you. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to have friend, family, and loved ones in our lives, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you continue to embrace us and encourage us and lift us up, Lord, in our lives. And so, Lord, here we are. Lord, you've told us that we can come boldly unto the throne of grace, Lord. So we come now, Lord, with whatever petitions are on our heart and mind, Lord. We agree and believe by faith we are interceding one for another. Yeah. And we ask, Lord, that you would touch us right now, Lord that you would provide every need in our lives, Lord. Whatever it exists and may be, Lord, you know. Lord, I don't know everything that is going on in the lives of your people, Lord, but you, uh, being who you are and omniscient and all of that, Lord, you know just what it is that we stand in need of. You just ask us to come to you and call on your name, Lord. And so here we are, Lord, we're asking. We're praying, Lord, that you would just touch us and lay your hands on us and lift us up where we belong. 
We pray, Lord, that you would ease our aches and our pains in our bodies, Lord. We ask, Lord, that what doctors cannot do, Lord, that you would take your hand and lay it upon us, Lord, and lift us up, Lord, and heal our bodies, Lord. Yes. And even that, Lord, which uh, in their limited uh, minds and, and training, Lord, they can do, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would just intervene and intercede, Lord, that you would uh, continue to touch their hearts and minds, Lord, and lead them in the right direction, Lord, in which they should go. Lord, we pray right now by your own power, Lord, by your divine measures in our lives, Lord, that you would uh, do what needs to be done. Provide, Lord, every spiritual blessing, Lord, in our lives that we need. Lord, bless us, Lord, with every financial blessing in our lives that we need, Lord. Bless us, Lord, with every uh, ounce of encouragement we need in our lives, Lord. Bless us today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Then, Lord, as we prepare our hearts and minds later to come back here in this uh, sacred desk, Lord, and to share, Lord, as you would speak to our hearts, Lord, and as you would speak to us and through us, Lord, we ask, Lord, that you would just allow us to hear from heaven, hear your word, Lord. Speak into our lives, Lord. We pray that you would allow us to leave here differently than when we came. Allow us, Lord, to leave here victoriously, knowing that you are King of kings and Lords of Lord, that you have all things under control. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the outcome and the victory. Lord, we thank you, Lord for what you have done and what you're about to do in this place. In Jesus' name, amen. Change me, O oh God, to make me more like you. Change me, O oh God, wash me through and through. Create in me a clean heart so that I may worship you. Change me, O oh God, make me more. Wash me through and through. Create in me a clean heart so that I may worship you. Just create.
blessed Savior, I surrender all. Amen. Now to the preaching hour. Bibles back to Matthew as we've heard earlier in our hearing. Um, there we find the message for today. Uh, God's got this. <clears throat> Amen. That, that's the word for today. Amen. God's got this. Um, in the previous three parables, um, we find uh, Jesus sharing uh, as a result of the challenging of his authority earlier on. Um, he responds to those three parables. Now he comes to the place where uh, he emphasizes the recognition of that authority uh, through these short three teachings that we'll discover uh, in the weeks to come. The first of which we want to look at today uh, in verse 15 through 22 when the Pharisees would come to him and propose a question to him uh, as to how it is uh, that they ought to handle the matter of taxes. Um, and so they would come to Jesus. And as they would come to Jesus, uh, the text says that um, they were trying to entangle him as they would talk uh, to him. And so this was no ordinary question. Uh, but even as they would come to him and present to him um, this, this question, uh, I want you to rest assured in knowing that even though they would try to trick and to trap him, uh, God's got this. That's good news. It's not only good news for them, it's good news for us because just as uh, God had it then, God still has it even today. Uh, as we find ourselves faced with various challenges, uh, not only to our own person, but challenges um, to our faith. Amen. Uh, God's got that also. And so that's the message for today we want to share with you, that God's got this. Uh, they come to Jesus with their flattering talk, and, uh, and they would ask, uh, him this question about taxes and it's really a lose-lose scenario in their minds that's why they feel like they could actually trap him with this conversation because um, if Jesus would say no to paying taxes to Caesar it could be construed as a challenge to the authority of the emperor on the other hand Jesus answering yes could be seen as a betrayal of his people. And so they figured that they got it now. Uh, this is the question that will stump him. Uh, this is the way in which we will trap him utilizing his own words. 
And so Jesus would brilliantly and simply yes. Yes. Uh, deal with that question and let them know that his authority remains intact. And that he, in fact, is still God. I like that. I want you to walk with me through pages of these scriptures and see just what it is that I'm talking about. I want you to notice here that um, this is different than what he was speaking of earlier in Matthew 17, verse 24 through 27. Because there, Peter was asking about the Jewish temple tax uh, that was commanded by the Torah, uh, instructed through the law. But however, the poll tax for Judea, which is at issue here, uh, went to support the foreign pagan oppressors. Uh, this had already been attacked by Judas of Galilee over in AD 6, uh, according to Josephus. But my brothers and sisters, um, Jesus would masterfully handle that question. And let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, if we could just walk through these here verses, uh, I want you to see the setup as it unfolds, beginning in verse 15. Um, I want you to see this set up. Uh, they, the, the scripture says the Pharisees went and plotted how they might entangle him in his talk. So it shows us from the start that uh, they were an, attempting to get him to tie himself up in knots. Uh, they felt as if uh, we, what we would refer to as a riddle, that they would catch him in uh, a conversation that would ultimately uh, wind up just getting him all twisted up in his words and then finding no way out of the conversation uh, other than to make everybody uh, angry. Uh, let, let me show you. Uh, the two groups that would come uh, the Pharisees and the Herodians. Uh, the Pharisees uh, resented having to pay taxes to Rome as an infringement on Jewish law. That was their position. The Herodians, on the other hand, were a small group of Jews loyal to the various members of, the, of Herod's family. Um, they had found their way to make peace with the occupying invaders and saw taxes as uh, an appropriate way to fulfill their responsibility as good citizens. And so Jesus stands now in the middle between these two groups. And in their minds, no matter which side he takes, uh, the other group would be accepted and he would be unable to leave them uh, with his hands clean and nobody upset. Uh, and so uh, they're, they're setting Jesus up. And, and there's nothing like a good setup. Uh, if you did not include uh, hypocrisy and pretentious behavior. I mean, that's just part of the recipe and the formula uh, that goes along with trying to set someone up. Mm. So as they would come to Jesus and uh, began to try uh, to trap him, um, they began with this form of flattery as a means to disarm Jesus. That they would come to Jesus uh, and, and they would immediately refer to him as teacher. Uh -huh. uh, on other occasions, we've heard individuals refer to him as master. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and, and as they were referred to him as, as teacher, uh, they are in fact correct in that he is a teacher, uh, but they fall flat, they fall short 
in their description of him uh, because we all know that he is not only a teacher, but he's much more than a teacher. Um, and so uh, we give them uh, partial credit, amen, uh, for trying uh, to flatter him and to share uh, with him that uh, he is rightfully a teacher. Uh, and so as they come to him and say, teacher, uh, we know you are true. Yes, once again, they get it right. He is true. Uh, he is uh, uh, the truth. Yes, all things that is righteous and all things that are noble are found in him. Yes, uh, if you want to understand what is right and what is wrong, just find out what side God stands on and you'll find yourself standing on the side of truth and righteousness. Mm. Um, yes, yes. You are true. Yes. Um, not only do they acknowledge that he's a teacher, he's true, um, they combine the two and say, you teach the way of God in truth. Uh, nor do you care about anyone for you do not regard the person of men. And what they're saying right there is that Jesus is not affected uh, by uh, the popular opinion of other folk. Amen. Mm. Amen. Uh, you know, when you look at these politicians when it comes to election time, <laughs> uh, they will enlist a service uh, to put out opinion polls. Uh, and and whatever way, you know, they throw up the tea leaves and where the wind blows mm. uh, is where they land in their position. Uh -huh. uh, they want to know what the people think and whatever they get and ascertain from the opinion polls, they'll come out onto the campaign trail and say, they're for that. Yes. Uh, uh -huh. But not so with Jesus. Hmm. Yes, Jesus was one who would share the truth of God. Uh, it didn't matter where, what the, where the opinion of people would lie. Uh, he would just tell it as it is. Uh, that's, that's what they're expressing. And we all learn something from that. Even now in 2021, we all learn something from that. Mm. Uh, uh, even as the people of God, preachers of God, pastors of God, missionaries of God, evangelists. I mean, uh, the whole gamut across the board. Whatever your role or relationship is with God uh, as a believer, we all get that. Uh, that our position in life and, and where we stand ought not be based on opinion polls. Mm. Uh, where we stand in life ought not be based on uh, the cultural movement of the moment. Mm. Uh, we are we ought not determine whether or not we stand for this or that based on whether or not uh, the crowds are flowing in that direction or not. Uh, if we want to know whether or not we stand for uh, this or that, uh, we, we all go back to the Word of God and find out what the truth of God says, and, and then we ought to fixate ourselves on that. Yes, we all plant our feet firmly on the foundation of truth. Jesus would teach us a great lesson uh, the reason why we can stand here today and say God got this is because God uh, stands on a firm foundation. Yes. Uh, God does not move uh, easily as a tree would, would shift in the wind. Uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, God is the same uh, as a Hebrew writer would tell us uh, yesterday today and forevermore. Yes, uh, and that's why I stand here today and say on Christ, the solid rock I stand. All of the ground is shifting sand and sinking sand. Can I get a witness? Mm. Amen. Uh, yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, uh, they would come to Jesus and try to uh, entrap him, yes, by peppering uh, their conversation with a little bit of truth. Uh, yes, they would come to him, yes, uh, and 
trying to butter him up, trying, in fact, to to soften him up and to uh, disarm him and and to to draw him in to answer that question where they feel like uh, yes they will ultimately lead him to a trap and entangle him up in his own words uh, and and have him to walk off with his head hung down uh, yes uh, with with the folk who are standing around on one side or the other being enraged at what he says next. Mm. Uh, it's a setup. Ah, uh, yes, my brothers and sisters, uh, yeah, they would come to him uh, trying to, to catch him off guard or by surprise, but uh, you can't catch God off guard or by surprise. God knows what's lurking around the corner. God knows what's around the way. Yes, before you even think it or imagine it, God already knows the thoughts and the intents of our hearts. Uh, but nonetheless, man has yet to figure out that man's arms are too short to box with God. I guess they just didn't watch the stage play. Um, and so even to this day, in this generation and age, we still have folk who think that perhaps they can outfox or outsmart God. God says, I got this. Settle down. Hold, hold your horses. Uh, yes, Lord. Uh, yes, sit Lord. back. Get you some popcorn. Watch how I handle this. Mm. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Uh, and so, my brothers and sisters, if the first point is that it's a setup, the second point of this message would lead us to, to, to see uh, through the setup. If we would look through the eyes of Christ, yes, in verse 18, Jesus perceived their wickedness. Mm. My brothers and sisters, it's good for us to have a close tie, yes. a close-knit relationship yes. with God. Thank you, Lord. Yes, because if God has the eyes to perceive, Yes, if God has uh, the wisdom, if God has the knowledge, the insight, the foresight, yes, to see through what's going on around us, if we are tightly knitted with him, then God will share with us what it is that he sees. Mm. Yes, Lord. Uh, Jesus perceived that wickedness. He just calls it what it is. He's, he sees through the flowery phrases that they would use. Yes, uh, and he would call them out on it, and he would just simply say their wickedness. Not only does he call it wickedness, yes, uh, but he goes on to say uh, that they are hypocrites. Uh -huh. mm. And we talked about that word hypocrites earlier on in Matthew. Yes, yes uh, it simply uh, means uh, a pretender. Uh, I like what uh, Kirk Franklin says in one of his songs when he says, get uh, the actors off the stage. Yes. Uh, yes. My brothers and sisters, uh, yeah, that, that's what God is saying to this crowd here today. Uh, is you need to get off the stage uh, with your pretentious behavior and your flattery words because uh, flattery will get you nowhere with me. Can I get a witness? Mm. Yes, God is looking for uh, a right heart and pure motives and intentions uh, in our lives. Uh, and, and so he would call them wicked. Uh, yes, uh, and as he looks at them, Jesus makes it clear that he is well aware of their uh, conceited motives, their, their, their uh, ways that are not right. Uh, Yes, uh, and, and it, eventually we will come to the place in life, some, somewhere down the road, uh, yes, men, women uh, around the world, humanism, uh, yes, uh, and all of that other stuff that's floating in the air of our day, uh, yes, we'll have to come to the place where it will recognize uh, that it cannot outfax God. Mm. God's got this. <laughs> yes, uh, I know that this is the age and the time in which they'll try. Yes. Yes. Uh, but a day is coming when every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. Uh, 
Uh, uh, yes, uh, yes, a day is coming when we'll have to recognize and realize, we'll have to come to the place uh, that we will acknowledge that God is King of kings and Lord of lords. Mm. Uh, it's coming. Yes. I don't care what it looks like right now. The day is coming. Yes, when we will have to acknowledge, uh, yes, the glory of God. We will have to acknowledge the reign of God in our lives. He made us, and he know all about us. Oh, yes, nothing catches him off guard or my surprise. He said, why, why do you test me? I mean, Jesus looks at what it is that they're doing, uh, and he looks at it as foolishness. He looks at it as futile. He says, why, why do you test me? I mean, you coming at me like this. Uh, don't you realize by now who I am? I mean, after I have turned over uh, the tables of the money changers, you don't get it. Yes, after I done cast out demons, you, you still don't get it to chase them up out of the temple? All right. Yes, uh, and after I came in and started teaching them, as a matter of fact, uh, yes, even at the age of 12, uh, yes, I dumbfounded your best of teachers. Uh, Jesus would call them out for their pretentious ways. He sees through them. Then look at here, Jesus thirdly, would flip the setup back on them. Mm. Yes, uh, Jesus would flip it on them, turn it around, and make them have to walk away with their heads hung down, realizing uh, that once again he done outsmarted them. Once again he done made he done made uh, a fool out of them, if I could just say it that way. <laughs> he said, "Come here. Look at verse 19." He says, "Come here." Uh, show me the tax money. Uh, pull, pull a denarius uh, out of your pocket. Uh, yes, uh, uh, you, you get some change out of your pocket and bring it here. Uh, uh, and, and they did that. They, they would bring him the tribute money. Uh, yes, uh, and, and, and he says, uh, 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 whose image uh, and, and whose inscription is this? Uh, Yes, uh, uh, what, what does it look like? Uh, who, 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 who does it resemble? Uh, they, they, would, they would have to acknowledge that uh, the image uh, and subscription on uh, the coin was none other than that of Caesar. Mm. Yes, uh, look, look at what Jesus does. So it, uh, I mean, they, they were expecting Jesus to say, to them, uh, yea or nay, and make somebody mad and, and leave them walking away, uh, no longer on his side, no longer affiliated with him, no longer respecting him, no, no longer embracing him. They thought they had him right here, but I want you to know God's got this. Uh, they said, uh, uh, This is Caesar on him, and Jesus just simply. And yet profoundly would say to them, uh, I tell you what, you render, or in other words, the word render means to give back. Uh, you, you, you render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Yes, you, you, got, you got carnal uh, things here before uh, me. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, take the carnal stuff. Yes, that you're talking about. And you give it back to carnality. I, I mean, uh, Caesar got his image on the, the coin. G Caesar has his inscription on the coin. Uh, yes, you just go on and give back to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. Uh, but then, I, I want you to know he don't leave it there. He says, while well, I got your attention, and since we are on the subject of, of giving back to its creator, yes, giving back, yes, uh, uh, to, to the one who has his image inscribed on it, yes, 
uh, uh, let me take you one step further. I know you didn't ask this. Uh, yes, I know you really don't want to know this, but but while we're here, I, I got to leave this on you. I got to drop this on you before I drop the mic. <laughs> you not only to give on the Caesar back to him what is his but I want you to give to God the things that are God's. Yes. Uh, uh, I, I made this world from nothing. Yes. I brought it into existence. Uh, uh, the world is mine uh, and everything that dwells therein. Can I get a witness? Yes. Uh, I made man from the dust of the earth. I created him in my image. Uh, yes. Uh, I, I made the, the cattle of the field. I, I made the fish of the sea. I made the fowl in the air. Yes. Uh, the world was made by my hands. Can, can I get a witness yes, here? Yes. yes uh, God wants you to understand and to know uh, that I am God. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. Yes. yes uh, and so while we're on the subject, uh, let me put my holy kickstand down long enough for you to just comprehend and embrace, uh, yes, the fact that, that, that God is God, that God uh, owns everything. And why are you in the spirit of giving? Yes, and rendering back to ownership. Yes, you ought to know that you ought to give back to God. Uh, yes, uh, those things that are God. And, and so when you get your paycheck on Friday, uh, yes, you ought to come running to God with your tithes and offering. Can I get with you? Amen. Yes, I, I know I can get an amen right there, right? Amen. Yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, he says, uh, when you sit down at your table, yes, uh, to enjoy your fine meal that you prepared, uh, yes, can somebody who will bow their head and say, Lord, I thank you for your provisions today. Uh, yes, God says, uh, yes, come here while we on the subject. Uh, yes, uh, can I get somebody, yes, uh, who will come back to me uh, when they start at their automobile uh, and it's taking them from one place uh, to the next uh, to just say, thank you, Lord, for giving me transportation. Thank you, Lord, clothes on my back. Thank you, Lord. Uh, he says, render to Caesar the things of Caesar, but you. but you will not stop there. Yes, don't you dare forget Thank you, uh, that you will give God the things that are God's. Uh, there, there are some things that belong to God, and you will not forget that. It wasn't their intention to place attention on God. Uh, but Jesus turned the tables on their feeble attempt to trap him uh, to let them know that uh, I'm God all by myself. Yes. Uh, and so while you're here uh, trying uh, yes to, to cause me to lose favor with my followers. Yes. While, while you're here yes trying uh, to get me to look like a fool in front uh, of my friends. Uh, I want you to know that uh, God's got this. Yes, this little test of yours uh, ain't nothing for an almighty God. Uh, yes, uh, this little fable feat of yours uh, is nothing, uh, yes, for the master of the universe, the creator, Amen. yes, of all things. Uh, yes, uh, so you just go on and take uh, that which belonged to Caesar and pay your little taxes. Uh, yes, yes uh, but you ought to turn, uh, realize that I am God. You ought to be, uh, yes, worshiping, uh, yes, right here. Yes, you ought to be coming uh, to the feet of God. Uh, yes, to say glory in the highest. Hosanna. You ought to be coming back to him. Thank you, Lord. Yes, yes. Amen. Uh, you all give glory where glory is due. Yes. Yes. Uh, and, 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 and can I show you their response? And i got to sit down now. Come on. Uh, in verse 22, when they heard these words, instead of them... Uh, Yes, being puffed up in pride with their chest stuck out. Uh, yes, feeling like we got him now. Yes, instead, uh, 
Yeah, they were amazed. They they marveled. Uh, yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, they had no other alternative but to leave there, yes, and go their way. Uh, they came there thinking that they would stand over him, uh, yes, on tiptoes. Uh, yes, they they came there thinking, uh, yes, that, that he would leave there this small and they would leave there this large. Uh, yes, but when they left there, uh, yes, they had to get up out of God. They had to, uh, yes, make their way out of town, uh, yes, uh, in a hurry, yes, because uh, Jesus flipped it on. Oh, yes, uh, my brothers and sisters, uh, he'll do it every time. Yes, uh, whenever, yes, the Satan would come, uh, yes, and try to, to defeat and to thwart uh, the people of God. Uh, yes, who are trying best they can to follow the plan of God. Uh, yes, God will flip it on him. Uh, yes, uh, whenever Satan, uh, yes, would try Yes, uh, to take something, uh, yes, uh, and to destroy us with it. Come here, Joseph. Uh, yes, uh, Satan meant it for evil, uh, yes, uh, but he found himself, uh, yes, being the administrator over the famine, uh, yes, uh, when everybody was suffering and looking for food, uh, yes, it would be that same Joseph uh, thrown in against, thrown in jail, yes, that same Joseph uh, who was left for dead, uh, Yes, that same Joseph, uh, yes, who everybody thought wouldn't amount to nothing, would never derive to be anything, sold into slavery and bondage, that same Joseph would be in charge. And those same individuals, those same brothers would have to come to him, uh, yes, in order to get food to eat. Yes, 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 thank you, Jesus. Yes, my brothers and sisters, oh. God's got this. And so I want to leave you with this, that no matter what we face in life, no matter how it comes upon us, uh, whether it's a trick or a trap, yes, yes. God's got this. And so if you and I would place our hands in his hands, I want to invite you right now today, wherever you are, whether you're here in this place or whether you're watching, yes, I want you to know that you can give it to the Lord and God will fix it for you. That God has control over it. God has dominion over it. God has power over everything that goes on in life. Whether it be a trick or a trap. Yes, God can handle it for you. Just come. Just come to Him. Yes, bring your burdens to the Lord. And leave them there. Yes, he can fix it for you. And so I would encourage you today to open your heart and to receive him in. Just ask him, Lord, come into my life. I believe in your son who died in my place. I believe that because he died on my behalf, because he shed his blood, that he can wash me, cleanse me, and put me in right standing with you. That I can be your son, your daughter. That I can be adopted into the family of faith. And that I can be an heir and joint heir with Christ Jesus. I believe that. And I want that in my life. And I invite you today to accept that and receive it today as God stands waiting with outstretched arms that you would come to him with all of your heart. Lord, we thank you now in the name of Jesus. For your son and our Savior, we thank you, Lord, for every individual as they are watching, even those who are standing here right now in my presence. Lord, we just come to you right now, and those who would accept and to receive you as Lord and Savior of their lives, Lord, we thank you, Lord, right now. And we ask, Lord, that you would bless the decision that they would make in their lives. And we ask, Lord, that you would touch their hearts and minds. Let them connect now with the body of Christ, that they would connect with your church, Lord, and that they would allow themselves to be disciple and to grow in their walk and relationship with you that they may understand what it is that you have purposed and planned for their lives. Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you for the outcome. We thank you, Lord, for what you are about to do, even right now. 
Amen. 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 Thank you. Amen. We thank God for this time of worship. Yes. Amen today, and we thank God for His Word. Amen. Amen. We're going to take a moment to just whisper a prayer for our neighbor. Whisper a prayer for someone in this room, right where they are, just simply pray for someone other than yourself. And as you're praying for them, they'll pray for you. And those who are watching, I want you to know you can also participate. You just simply pray for somebody. Just pray for somebody across the room, somebody uh, that you know. And just ask God's blessings and favor in their lives that God will touch them. God will bless them, heal them, lift them up. Just ask God's best in their lives. And as you're praying for others, others are praying for you. God's blessings be upon you. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hear us as we're praying today. Lord, we thank you, Lord, as we pray one for another, Lord. Lord, as we agree and believe by faith, Lord, we pray that you would hear us, Lord, and that you would bless that individual that we selected to pray for. Bless them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the answer to our prayers in Jesus' name. Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, present you fallers before his presence with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen.